They say that somewhere there is a fountain whose waters can make one young again. Ponce de Leon landed in Florida in 1513, seeking the legendary fountain of youth. Centuries later, the search continues. Modern science is replacing legend in the quest to turn back the clock and regain lost youth. For some, the fountain of youth is a reality. And it has changed their lives. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Old age, life's inevitable condition. Man's refusal to accept his own mortality has driven him to seek eternal life. A quest to learn the secrets of the process we call aging in the hope that somehow we can stop or reverse it and stay forever young. But do we know what aging really is? Aging represents a group of processes and the most significant kind of change that probably takes place is that change within the nervous system. Uh, followed very closely by the changes in the uh, glands of the body secreting the very important hormones that send messages everywhere in the body. And probably the third system that would be very important would be the immune system. Dr. Ruth really Wegg is both a gerontologist and biologist at the Andrus Gerontology Center at USC. Her specialty, the, the body's body. aging process. It is uh, possibly misleading to try to choose any one system or any one process and say this is aging. It's all aging. I am convinced that we will be able to delay, retard, and effectively eliminate aging. Maybe 100 and 150 years from now. There are as many ways to stay young as there are ideas and people in the world. In the mountains of Mexico is a place called Rancho La Puerta. Eating well, exercising, and having a relaxing vacation amidst natural beauty is very pleasant. But can it make you younger? Certainly with all the young people doing active things, I try to participate along with them and uh, keep up with them. It makes me feel like I'm younger and I, I act younger, feel younger. Well, I come to be kind of rejuvenated and get myself into an exercise routine that I slip up on after I'm here, not here for a while. I can come down here exhausted and in two or three days I'm doing four and five hours of very vigorous exercises and I don't even feel tired. I feel exhilarated. I feel this place is good for the soul as well as good for the body. The beautiful setting, uh, the relaxed atmosphere, and the chance for people to forget their troubles and relax in the sun. That's as close to the fountain of youth as you can find, and then the only thing to do is enjoy it. A 70-year-old woman feels she looks old and finds she can turn back the clock through the miracle of plastic surgery. Like that woman, Helen Demetrio wanted to look and feel younger. Helen found what she was after by having cosmetic surgery, 
or what is commonly known as a facelift. As far as people knowing and those that have not seen me for a little while say, oh, Helen, you've lost weight. You look so pretty. And they carry on like that. I like people. I love my work. And if I'm going to continue as I have been, I might as well make the best of what I can do and what I have. And this is one of the reasons I decided to go ahead and have it done. When I had thought about doing this, it was just a matter of I didn't want to look like I was 18 years old, which we know it cannot be done. Morning, ladies. Hi. Is she over here yet? Dr. Stanley Freilich is the plastic and reconstructive surgeon who performed Helen's surgery. Patients come to this office and to the office of any plastic surgeon seeking to realign, as it were, that feeling of, of youth with what they see in the mirror. And this was what we call a crisis of body image. She felt uh, considerably more youthful than her physical appearance would indicate. She came to me originally because she had some problem with her neckline and the jowl area around here, her lower eyelids and her upper eyelids. And basically it was making Helen feel a little bit out of proportion what the age that she really felt. The results of my surgery has been to me, uh, very successful, and I'm very, very happy about it. And inwardly, I feel very, very good about it. It's given me a lot to go on. What you're about to see is an actual operation containing explicit surgical footage. The actual process involved in a facelift is demonstrated here for us by Dr. Lawrence Seifert. It is most important to find a qualified plastic and reconstructive surgeon. Ask your family doctor and ask to see the surgeon's credentials. After carefully marking the areas involved, the surgeon releases the facial skin from its underpinnings to the face. Neck muscles are rearranged, facial fat removed, and the skin pulled back to appear more smooth. Though it looks painful, the operation will leave no visible scars, and the patient will be home that same day. This 70-year-old woman provides graphic evidence of what can be accomplished in only 18 days. For her, the fountain of youth is a reality. Marty. Hey. On a playground in Los Angeles, a group of senior citizens play like teenagers. Hey. At 73, Warren Blaney thinks he's young. Usually when a person takes a look at me and they think, my goodness sakes, I guess that fellow's about ready for, uh, well, most any place but uh, living and action. And I just feel, well, that certainly is the attitude of the individual, not the appearance of a person. Because time has nothing to do with it as long as you keep yourself active and busy. Keeping active and busy are easy for Warren. His typical schedule would wear out a 30-year-old. As founder of the Senior Olympics, he's used to putting in full days, running the office, and recruiting old friends. Hi, Warren. Hi, Bert. Come on in. Well, we want people that are active and willing and ready to do things, because action is the key word. Right. And are you still working out? Oh, I work out all the time. I run 50-yard, uh, 75-yard wind sprints, work out with the weights. You know, Bert Goodrich muscles. was the original Mr. America. Over the years, he has managed to remain incredibly youthful, whether 62 or 72 years young, as seen here. Have these two men discovered still another way to turn back the clock? What is their special secret? Have they somehow found the fountain of youth? Hey, gang, Warren Blaney. 
take one of these and you might like to see the Olympics this year again. I don't know the secret myself. I just drink a lot of milk and eat a lot of grain fags, and boy, they agree. And ice cream. I don't know the Whatever his formula is, Warren keeps going at an incredible pace, meeting new people and promoting his passion, the Senior Olympics. Thank you. Thanks a lot, fellas. Okay. Go, Blaine. Come on, behind me, behind me. Yeah, shoot it. There you go. Finding the fountain of youth is within everybody because it's only in their mind and in their heart. Yes, I really believe that I found living youthfully is the best way or the fountain of life. For some, staying young is a matter of attitude, but the real fountain of youth may lie in a simple pill. What you are seeing has been called the fountain of youth drug. I have seen people with bald spots. After a while of using Girofatol, the hair came back. I feel a young man without Girofatol, I would never have done it. If I'd had a work treadmill, a cardiograph that measures the ability of your heart to perform work, after taking the drug, I had almost 100%, over 100% improvement by the end of a year. And I decided that this was a worthwhile drug. Girovitol, but in much of the world, it is simply known as GH3. Formulated by Dr. Anna Aslan in Romania over 30 years ago, People around the world have claimed it effective against senility, high blood pressure, age spots, varicose veins, gray hair, and many of the other effects of aging. There are people who use it every day and swear it works. A doctor here suggested to me that I should take Girovitol. And after I took Girovitol, my whole, whole physical idea changed. I could think better, much more alert. I used to have real gray hair, the fuse I have left, but they disappeared. I had arthritis in my knees very badly, that all disappeared completely. And I used not to be able to mow my own lawn. That's how I was out of breath, head asthma, all those things. I haven't got it anymore. I'm completely a new man. Good evening. Welcome to Primetime Tours and the Girovatol Information Center. So far, it is legal only in Nevada. Primetime Tours helps people get to Las Vegas and Girovatol. But what is Girovatol? Curiously, it is mainly made of procaine, the main element in common Novocaine. Is it possible that something as common as Novocaine can reverse the aging process? What's the reason you want to take Girovatol? Well, I've had some arthritic uh, condition for the past three years, and I've heard that it's supposed to do wonders for that. Dr. Charles yeah, Vanetti believes it is possible. Now, Mr. Sheldon, I'm going to uh, check your blood pressure and uh, check you over a little bit, and then we'll talk some more about Girovitol. Okay? Most of the ailments that people have that they seek Girovitol for are age-related. Girovitol, as far as being a, an anti-aging drug, I definitely think it is. We have had people who have had their hair turn dark again. We've had people who say the wrinkles have left. The question is, is it because that they feel better and they look younger, or is it actually retarding aging? Now, at the cellular level, I think it retards aging. Above that, I won't say. But not everyone agrees. The agency responsible for the testing of new drugs in the United States the Food and Drug Administration is not convinced. The drug has been tested, undergone clinical testing some years ago. Uh, none of these tests revealed that it had any, uh, in any way could uh, do the things that are claimed by the sponsor. And therefore, the drug for our agency is an unapproved uh, new drug which is misbranded. If it should occur that after testing that the drug is an effective drug to make people stay younger, this would be a marvelous thing for us in our society. We would all lo looking for this, but as of now, there is no evidence. 
Given the FDA's position for this moment in time, Gerovitol is not an acceptable answer. But are there others? I've become a woman of 30 or 35 again as far as the way I feel and think. I have clear skin, I, uh, my skin is smooth, my hair is normal, not dry or brittle. I wake up in the morning full of energy. I walk three miles a day. I couldn't walk any further than a brisk walk to the bathroom before I came here. For the people at the Pritikin Longevity Center in Santa Monica, California, a diet and exercise program that includes up to eight meals a day is having dramatic results. These people are reversing the effects of two age-related killers, diabetes and heart disease. Fatigue disappears within two or three weeks when you change your diet. And people feel better than they have in 20 years, people tell me. Author and nutritionist Nathan Pritikin believes the fountain of youth is simply a matter of diet and exercise. The American diet is a disaster for good health. It's a smorgasbord of death in this country uh, by the gourmet foods that we eat. We've got to get back to the simple foods that don't damage our bodies. Those are the simple whole grains, fruits and vegetables, beans and peas, potatoes, and you've got to cut your animal protein to a pound or a pound and a half a week. If you do that, and you've got the fountain of youth. There is no remedy for aging and the degenerative diseases. Heart disease, breast cancer, and so on are inevitable unless you change your diet and exercise program. None of them need happen. They're all preventable. Is it really possible that just through eating the right food and exercising, we can live longer and put off the illnesses of old age? Richard Rockert was only 44 when he had to have emergency triple bypass surgery. As he describes it, he couldn't even carry his own bags into the Pritikin Center. Richard was headed for more surgery and felt so low that he was ready to take his own life. Then he heard about the center. One short year later, things are very different for Richard Rockert. Mr. Prennigan convinced me that he could do something for me. I was admitted the following week. I'm jogging an hour a day each morning. I have stuck rigidly to the diet. I've lost a total of 33 pounds since entering this center. I just feel like a new man. I don't know if it's a fountain of youth, but if it isn't, it's the closest thing I'm sure that I'll ever find. Simply amazing. You eat this diet and you will be young forever? Hardly. Uh, you eat this diet and we can reverse your atherosclerosis. You eat this diet and there will be no hypertension. Biologist Ruth Wegg of USC's Gerontology Center and author of the classic textbook, Nutrition and the Later Years, wants more proof. We do know that food does make a difference, an enormous difference. We do know that exercise can make an enormous difference in health, in vigor, in freedom from some diseases. But there is no indication in any of the work that uh, Mr. Pritikin's program has been able to demonstrate uh, that it is only his diet or the exercise pattern he has recommended. We need the kind of controlled studies that he has not yet done. That does not mean that I am ignoring the people he has obviously helped. What I am asking for is some way to be able to count on the evidence that is now descriptive. Scientific control is part of a remarkable experiment at UCLA's School of Pathology. Researchers are working with mice in the hope that they will find a way to extend the human lifespan. By carefully controlling the caloric intake of the animals, these scientists are getting ever closer to finding the key that unlocks the mystery of aging. Project coordinator, Dr. Richard Weindrug. This is the room where we keep our dietarily restricted mice. As we mentioned earlier, there are two types of food restriction that we study. That initiated very early in life, uh, and that initiated at, in mid-adulthood or even later in old age. Food restriction is the sole way of increasing maximum lifespan in warm-blooded animals. 
it is an important tool for which to study slowed aging and therefore may give us hints into the aging process and the mechanisms causing us to age. The diets that we feed these animals that are food restricted are specifically enriched in proteins, salts, and vitamins. I'm now grabbing a uh, food restricted animal which is two years old and if he doesn't run up my arm we can compare him her actually to a control animal uh, and you can get some idea of the size difference between these. These are both two-year-old animals and based on the results of our experiments and a large number of ex experiments carried out in other labs this normally fed animal which I'm holding on to will probably live to be about two and a half or three years old, uh, whereas this will probably live to be three to three and a half years old uh, and sometimes four years old. As we're seeing benefits in survival, we're seeing inhibition in late life disease, and we're seeing uh, beneficial effects on many aspects of immune system aging. This work has significance, I think, for three reasons. One, it will allow us to better understand the biology of aging. Two, it may allow for the later years of people to be better years. And thirdly, it may eventually allow for actual prolongation of the lifespan. In laboratories such as this, science is closing in on the secrets within every living thing. Perhaps someday, very soon, the experience called aging will be no more. When we can reach into a cell and stop the hands of time, we will have the fountain of youth. Age will be calculated by attitude and spirit then, just as it should be for each of us today. Lost civilizations, extraterrestrials, myths and monsters, missing persons, magic and witchcraft, unexplained phenomena. In search of cameras are traveling the world seeking out these great mysteries. This program was the result of the work of scientists, researchers, and a group of highly skilled technicians.